Morning chaps, welcome along to the vlog. It is Friday. Oh, I spun around a bit fast then, didn't I? So today uh, I'm recovering a little bit from going to Gainsborough Beer Festival last night. It was actually quite good and I enjoyed myself. Uh, coming to the brewery this morning though and uh, last night Gemma had a few problems with the car. So that's our first port of call. She was driving home in the dark of course after picking Dominic up from football and everybody was flashing her. Both of her headlights had gone at the same time, which is strange, but I suppose can happen. I thought there might be an underlying problem. I've checked the fuses and everything else. Seems fine. I think it is just the bulbs. It's these H7s, if you're familiar with them. They look like they're burnt out. What I will say, however, though, is God, Peugeot make it hard for you to get to the bloody bulbs, don't they? Anyway, let's go and pick up a couple from the motor spare shop and get them changed. And here we are. Have you got one of these in your town? Davmac. Used to be Retford motor spares, but they've obviously sold out to a group. Anyway, cheapest place in town for bulbs. So, for H7 ring brand auto lamps they came in at a unit price of uh, £4.39 each it says £6.6 six, uh, now it's charged us uh, 4 39 must have been and I also ordered 10 stainless steel hose clamps these are fully stainless to go around the new uh, silicon pipe on the pilot kit actually Look at that, 10 stainless steel hose clamps, £5.61, so a total of £23 plus tax, £27.80. That's not bad, I don't think. Right, time to uh, shoot back, shoot back to the brewery and get these bulbs in. It start bloody raining as well. Bugger! <laughs> Tell her, can't you? You won't move out of the way. <laughs> you well, Mama didn't raise no fool. If it's raining outside and we can't do the work on the car, let's bring it into the brewery. Righty ho, folks. One bulb changed. I've got a bit of practice. So I'm going to set you up so you can have a look inside and I'll show you now how to change a bulb on a Peugeot 3008 because it's a real bastard. 
So, if you want to change the day bulb or the indicator, you have to go under here with a Torx 40 and undo the bulb holder, which is a real twat. But, if you're just changing the H7 uh, main beam, then it's simply a case of pulling off this little rubber cover to expose the bulb. In fact, I'm doing the wrong one. It's not that rubber cover, it's the next one up. Oh, we don't have a rubber cover for this. Maybe that's why it's blown. And then there's a little cable cap that comes off. That's that little fella there. Then you have to reach inside, and grab the bulb and pull it out, noting the orientation. So, on these H7 bulbs, they have this little, um, let's just focus in on it. They have this little tab on the top, and that it does indicate up. So once you get it into the position, wiggled in, then you should have the terminals in a vertical position like this, whereupon you can then clamp back the, uh, the cable uh, connector. So let's go down here and see if we can do it in one go. So it is tricky. So I'm going to remove the bulb, paying attention to the fact that it's a halogen. So I'm not going to touch that surface. We've got the little indicator upwards. So I'm looking through the front to make sure I'm lined up correctly. And we're in. And then the connector, this is the trickiest part. But there we go, I've got the connector back on. If you add the back cap, then that would want to be replaced now. I don't know where it is actually. It's probably fell down, down there somewhere. And then the old bulb can go in the bin. And that's that. So it should now work. And as if by magic, There are the side lights. Um, hold on a sec. There we go. Full headlights, daylights, headlights. Perfect. Her job's a good one. She's back on the road. Brownie points for me. I'll tell you what, here's a little bonus, lads. Check it out. We're just checking on fermentation while dossing around in the brewery. This is awesome, don't you think? I love it. It's actually not picking up one of the tilts though. The green. It will, it will. It keeps flashing on and off. So we've got the van. I've just been up to Screwfix. The cheeky bastards tool station have opened up next door as well to the Screwfix in Ratford. Can you believe it? kind of good for me. Anyway, I've been up to pick up uh, quite a few bits. So, we've got a hose reel for this hose that I chopped off our main hose the other day, that on the floor there. It's all spare, so I thought I'd get a hose reel to wind that up, tidies it a bit. And then, in here, we've got some polythene water pipe so we're going to extend the water the mains water around to the pilot kit so we've got a tap next to the pilot kit and we're also going to put another tap in near the HLT on the main kit so I don't have to unplug the hose pipe when I want to uh, chill after a brew day so that's that um, got some more floor paint so at some point in the coming month we're going to redo the floor again and keep adding those layers and uh, oh that was and improve obviously improve the floor as much you uh, as much as possible so the tack we're going to take with the floor this time round is I'm going to scrub the old paint off on places where it's already poor, got poor adhesion and to help us do that I've picked up these two implements that go on an angle grinder 
So we'll stick these on the base of an angle grinder and really rough up the concrete and the paint and then we're going to give it an acid wash with some hydrochloric acid or brick acid and then when it's dry we'll be painting so hopefully that'll stop the paint flaking off in the future. That's the plan. So we've got rollers for that. Um, we're also going to add a waste for the hot water from the pilot kit when we brew on the pilot kit because at the minute if I'm not collecting all of it, we're running it down the unit, obviously on top of the paint, that we're probably gonna have to redo. So I don't want the paint to be uh, lifted by hot water. So we're gonna pop a little waste so we can soak it away. And finally, we've got some adapters and some cables so we can sort out the motorized valves for the pilot kit as well. So I've got plenty of jobs to do. I'm not doing them over the weekend though. Nottingham Beer Festival tomorrow. So I've decided to take a few jobs off the list. One of them being installing this panel meter to the control panel. And this is a big three phase readout to give us amps and volts across all three phases. So I'll turn it on and just show you how she works. So there we can see, that's the voltage across the three phases from phase to phase. And then it will tick across and show you the voltage on the three phases from phase to neutral at some point. It does, believe me. And then this is the ampage going through um, the system. So if I turn the HLT on, you can see it jumps up considerably but there's a drawback you may notice that that bottom one didn't move because I've disconnected it and it's sat here look doing nothing this is live three phase so I'm not going to poke around too much so far that's one job that's kind of gone awry another job I've got to do is to put this little power power meter I've got power meter on my brain now this water meter on here somewhere I was thinking Maybe sticking it there, because we've got a bit of space. And then uh, that water meter then will control the water going into the HLT. So when I sparge, I need to top up. After I've mashed in, I need to top up my sparge water. And I usually do that with this lever here. But I don't want to have to come across and do that every time. So if I just set this to say, oh, I need 100 litres, We'll just go bu -bu 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 100 litres, press start, and it'll fill it up for me and stop. And I don't need to worry about overfilling the HLT, which I've done on occasion, which is a bit of a bum. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not going to make a start on any of these other jobs, including this pipe work, simply because uh, the time's getting on a little bit. And we're approaching 5 o'clock on a Friday. So, I'm going to take Chancy Boy home. He's just been barking for some reason. So, uh, he's barking mad. So yeah, sorry about that waffle there. Some people like a little bit of sharp waffle and some people aren't too keen on it, but uh, it is what it is. That's, that's all I've got for you today, folks. I am going to Nottingham Beer Festival tomorrow. If you're there, come and say hello. Mind you, you'll probably not see me because this video won't be up until I've been and come back, unfortunately. So, uh, Hello to everybody I did see. And uh, that's it folks, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna bugger off home and I'm gonna rest up. The knee's doing better, by the way, as well, just for your information. And uh, anyway, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.